So today, uh, this talk is specifically about cultural shifts and how you can leverage uh, chaos in platform engineering, which is something we wanted to tap in, uh, me and Raj. Unfortunately, Raj could not uh, be here uh, because of some issues, but um, rest assured, uh, he has provided a demo recording of uh, a few, like a five minute recording. So he'll be talking and going in depth about the architecture, how he's using it and stuff like that. So we'll see all the good stuff, but let's jump right into it. So a little bit about me. I'm a senior software engineer at Harness and also a maintainer at the project called Litmus, which is the uh, CNCF incubating project. And Raj is a senior enterprise architect at FIS and he has more than 20 plus years of experience. So definitely somebody uh, you would want to listen to. Now, moving on, uh, the agenda of, of this talk. So we'll be, uh, of course, you guys are platform engineers. So I'm not here talking about the basics of platform engineering, uh, but we'll be covering the core components of IDP, uh, talking a bit about the cloud native problem, which is why we are introducing chaos engineering, the what and why, the chaos first principles, and then we'll see how we can introduce the chaos in a hands-on demo uh, and talk about the vision and the tools that are in the market that you can use. Of course, the tools are just, uh, you know, uh, an abstract view of things. You can integrate your own tools. It's not uh, vendor specific or tool specific, but yeah. And then we are going to execute chaos, uh, observe the impact on a Grafana dashboard, hopefully, if the demo gods are happy. Now, let's talk about the problems uh, the Cloud Native era has on all of us, right? So we are basically running our, uh, we, are, we have shifted from a legacy, a very simple architecture to something as complicated as Cloud Native. So our DevOps course can be self-service. They are policy-driven. We have zero trust environment. So, so much problem, so much extra overhead has come into our manufacturing of a single software, which used to be so simple and has so many components. So this leads to something we call the DevOps problem, which is you shipping your uh, containers, you shipping your applications 10 times faster. And for that, to manage everything, we introduce something like platform engineering to have everything in a single uh, layer, right? So the core components of an IDP, these are all, these are some of the high level uh, components that I've mentioned, which is the application configuration management, the infrastructure orchestration, uh, the environment, deployment, and role-based access control. So these are the basic pillars that you might have in your IDP. And based on this, you might be extending it to, uh, you know, doing individual things on a higher level, on a, on a granular level for each of these core components. So this is something we are already familiar with when it comes to platform engineering. Uh, but what we are not is how we can wrap this entire scenario in the form of a chaos engineering uh, uh, deliver, delivery model. So the cloud native problem, like I mentioned, we from de legacy DevOps, we are moving into a cloud native DevOps and we are shipping not every quarter, but every week, which results in 10 times of more microservices being shipped, 10 times faster, and you know thousands of different environments. It's very easy to miss out on exactly uh, each and individual layers. So you might not be able to test everything. You might miss out here and there, and that might be the reason of your outage, right? So it's, if you see the pyramid, so you have your application, you have the other layers, like your Mongo, Kafka, your application, and then you have the cloud native service layer, the Kubernetes layer, the platform layer. So not everything is tested. We should, but we don't get enough time. So the solution to this, or let me actually tell you why we even need this. So it's downtimes, right? We hate downtimes. We don't want downtimes. Uh, this is what it causes uh, to our customers, to the people, to our users, and we definitely hate it. So these are some examples. Of course, I don't want to be harsh, but these are some real examples. So we have loss of customer confidence, some damage to integrity, lack of self, like loss of self employee confidence, and yada, yada, a lot of things. But th this is something we definitely don't want to do, and downtimes are something we want to avoid which is why we want to introduce chaos engineering. Now, what is it? I'm sure you guys have heard of it. It's a practice we do to deliberately uh, break our systems, uh, typically in production. It doesn't have to be in production, but something we do to ensure that it can withstand uh, unexpected disruptions. So you see this model, right, of chaos engineering. What we are saying is this is the core principle. We want to test some, we want to select the chaos experiments to test our applications. We want to run a set of targeted experiments, observe the impact, uh, use the learnings to make our uh, application more resilient, and then select the systems back to test. And this is the loop, right? So one, two, three, four, five. This is a cycle we keep on doing, and these are the core principles of chaos engineering. Now, what is the chaos first principle? So this talk is about the chaos first principle, right? Because we might or might not be doing chaos engineering. We are definitely doing platform engineering. So what is this principle? It's a 
principle in in the rap, in the context of platform engineering, which advocates that you go chaos first rather than you know um, being afraid of it. Uh, what might happen to my system? Should I even break my production? Should I even do it? It's costly. And so many uh, things, right? To not actually go ahead and proactively do it. So this principle advocates that. Uh, you design your system with the expectation that failure is the fundamental cause and that it's bound to happen. So we want to deliberately introduce chaos and disrupt the platform infrastructure to proactively identify the weaknesses. Now, this we are coming back to the platform engineering uh, layer again, once again, the core components of the IDP. Now, chaos engineering could be introduced in every single uh, segment of uh, every single component of platform engineering. For role-based access control, you can check for uh, who has permissions of doing what kind of chaos. You can check for uh, your application configuration. This is, of course, the most common use case of checking your application configuration. You can also check if your environment variables that you're passing as a part of the platform are actually uh, going or not, if there's some disruption there, if there's like a missing end which can break your system. Of course, there's infrastructure. You can target your VMs, bare metals, uh, Kubernetes uh, execution layer, things like that. And you can also control your deployment. So in each and every way or each and every pipeline of uh, platform engineering, you can introduce chaos. So this is the idea I wanted to show. Now, uh, how it plays a pivotal role. So chaos engineering in the context of platform engineering has three main uh, pillars, which is capacity planning and scaling. So by doing this, you can understand, uh, you can introduce the control chaos and understand what is the max you can go uh, at till what point uh, you're, uh, you're, you can expect failure, uh, what is how, how far, how further you can stretch it, and also this general, uh, it's a general idea that you are shifting your system to, towards resiliency by adopting this chaos first principle. So by doing this, you naturally embrace failure as a part of your system rather than being afraid that, oh, I had an outage, what do I do? So uh, the last is continuous improvement. So this promotes a mindset of continuous improvement within your teams rather than being scared uh, the day it happens and you're running in a, you know, self zero. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. Now, these are some of the tools we'll be using. Uh, this is, of course, just for demo. You don't have to use it. If you have your own service, your own tool, go ahead and use it. Uh, but yeah, the two tools we'll be using is Backstage and Litmus. So Backstage is an open platform for building developer portal. As you might have already known, there was a Backstage conf yesterday as well. Uh, but yeah, Litmus Chaos is the other uh, platform, which is a CNCF incubating project. And uh, Litmus Chaos is uh, actually open source. Both Backstage is also open source. And uh, you can use them combined to reconcile the idea that I just talked about. By the way, this is a, just an example. You can also use other tools and also use open APIs if you have. But yeah, that's the idea. Cool. Now let's actually hear from Raj. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Raj Vadaraju. I'm at Web Architect with uh, FIS. Uh, sorry, I did not join you in person. Uh, I have some family commitments. So I did not join. Uh, I want to share with some, of, some of my thoughts, what should we? Uh, hope you have a great uh, session uh, at KubeCon. Good, uh, good luck signing with your, with your uh, presentation on this topic. So the couple of topics that I want, kind of a thoughts that I want to share is the, the, the vision that we have at FIS on how do we integrate chaos in, uh, in into platform engineering. Uh, as you can see on the screen, right, there are four pillars that we can, you know, imagine or envisioning. Uh, one is define and execute chaos experiment, which is very basic and foundational uh, in the sense that uh, we want to define, uh, you want to define your chaos experiments that fit your needs and uh, execute them probably uh, manually, right? The key thing is you need to identify appropriate scenarios, what, what fits your application needs, uh, in our case, you know, we have wide variety of applications, cloud native, legacy applications, applications of the workloads running on Linux platform, Windows, uh, uh, and mainframe, etc. So what, and different kind of uh, banking applications that we have. So we, it's important to, you know, define and execute uh, mainly definition of those experiments. And the second step in the journey that we're envisioning is you, you want to offer this chaos as a service uh, so that it will become self-serviceable, easy to enable, disable uh, for your applications or, or, or platforms. And the third step is once you have that, you know, level of automation or enabled chaos as a service, you want to 
repeat this chaos in emitting uh, in, in regular intervals, right? More or less, you want to make the repeatable process. How do you do that? We want our our idea is to integrate uh, chaos into a CI/CD platform, uh, so that with the push of a button, we should be able to uh, we should be able to kind of uh, execute uh, chaos experiments. So we have we want to essentially make it a repeatable process and automate it. So that's the goal of you know, that that tile uh, the the uh, uh, goal of that step in the in the journey, which is integrate into CI/CD systems. Then the fourth pillar, which is kind of underlying uh, important pillar that we think is enabling appropriate observability and uh, make the chaos evaluation automated. Right. So without observability, you you cannot kind of uh, clearly measure whether you're a chaos experiment whether it's success or failure and also that evaluation that you do uh, that that needs to be automated so that you remove this toil of the manual effort that involved in in chaos engineering so that you can scale chaos engineering across the organization for you know hundreds of applications which is which is a case with uh, uh, with the uh, application which is the case with FIS right it could be hundreds of applications are uh, under some components within the applications uh, that's kind of uh, the larger scale that we are uh, I'm talking here so this is the, the vision uh, that we have and what we have done is we put together a, a blueprint architecture to realize this vision so that's presented here what I have got here is uh, uh, there are five six components that is depicted in this blueprint architecture or ecosystem the top you can see we have a CI/CD pipeline uh, which we envision with the push of a button you should be able to trigger the load uh, you should be able to trigger the chaos experiment and then you should be able to evaluate uh, the those chaos experiment whether the chaos that you just conducted uh, whether it's success or, or not and uh, near load on the top left uh, you can see near load or JMeter which is a load generator tools are integral part of this ecosystem because several times the resilience issue that you face in production environments they happen under load load and what we want to do is, is we want to simulate that type of uh, behavior uh, in, in, in pre-production environment using the load generators such as near load and JMeter and inject chaos experiments while applications under load so that you understand uh, the, the resiliency of the, of the application. And uh, you have on the bottom, you can see the observability tools, which are again are the integral part of uh, uh, the, the, this ecosystem. You have Denatrace, Splunk, uh, Prometheus. Currently, that, that's what we support. Or, uh, we, there may be other tools that, that may come along the way. On the right side, you have the Litmus, which is a chaos engineering uh, tool that we have in the toolbox. And we have a chaos blade also that we are using in, in some scenarios. But Litmus is a kind of a primary tool. Uh, Litmus is our chaos engineering tool where through which exposes APIs uh, through which we inject uh, the chaos experiment into the application target app, which is depicted on the bottom left corner on the screen. And we use Captain. Captain is a SCNCF project uh, to evaluate this experiment. The way we are envisioning is we have a uh, pre-chaos uh, phase, during chaos phase, and post-chaos phase. And we have hypotheses for each phase that we feed into Captain uh, in the form of SLIs and SLOs uh, so that once we conduct the chaos experiment, we ask Captain, hey Captain, go ahead, here is my five minutes, I, it's my pre-chaos period, it's a five minute I injected chaos, and five plus other five minutes is like my recovery period, right? Think of a 15 minute load test scenario. Right. Then I tell Captain, these are my time periods, and here is my SLA, SLS definitions on how the resources or other things should look like, such as such as golden signals, the error rate, response time, or throughput, and things like that. Go evaluate it, right? And then Captain goes talks to the the downstream observability tools, pulls the metrics, and gives me a a pass fail scenario or a pass fail boolean value. And that I can bake into my CI/CD pipeline, which is depicted on the top, making the decision whether whether a particular application was success 
in terms of chaos engineering practice and the easy ready to deploy to the next phase right so we want to automate uh, this end to end life cycle uh, so that chaos engineering can be a repeatable uh, repeatable process we have most of these pieces together in the environment but we don't have that even that that end to end pipeline built yet which are, we are in the process of building that we will we, we are kind of very close to building one uh, and and kind of repeat that pipeline across hundreds of applications excuse me that we have uh, within fis with that thank you thanks for the opportunity thanks for listening to me hopefully uh, this is helpful thank you awesome hello everyone uh, my name is raj vedraji i'm a very active okay let me move on a second guys okay cool uh i don't want to do a demo without crediting the guys who are awesome so uh this is uh nam ki park this is uh he has been a contributor with us uh, from LFX and he's been great so i'm if you're watching this so uh namq has been uh, good at uh, backstage particularly for litmus because backstage uh, is a platform which we were planning to integrate with so that we can um, uh, enable this observability or like uh, you know a platform engineering side to it so he has been uh, proactive in suggesting backstage uh, plugin litmus it's already published and uh, you can go to this uh, backstage plugin issue link or you can hit get up and you should see it there cool so what we have to do now is before jumping in these are the three uh, important uh, what do you say configurations of backstage that we need to add so in this case in the app config yaml which is the top left so the app config yaml is where you add your litmus ui you are definitely after deploying it and then you have uh, the litmus auth token which you need to add in order to in order for backstage to figure out that this is the product you're using and on the right you have the entities yaml this is where you can add your entities of litmus that you can use to visualize and see things so you you're seeing a kind of a gif but i'll show you this live but yeah these are two main things you need to do in order to actually uh, use backstage in litmus now let me come over to backstage which is here and once you do that you should see something like this you have a backstage litmus demo of course my company catalog is a generic thing it's your company it's your uh, org and then you can add the litmus component to it now once you do that you will see something like this this is the overview uh, of the uh, of the platform you're integrating so in this case it's litmus uh, it's just the bare minimum so you can of course extend it to as many things you wanted to you can add your owners the systems the tags and uh, things you want to connect it with now right now i have litmus deployed already so you see there are things like uh, chaos hub the infra how many infras are connected the experiments and if a gitops is on or not and you have some sub subcomponents if you want to introduce those but the interesting part is you see this litmus uh, tag right this litmus uh, tab specifically so in here you will get all the uh, dev information so things like the experiment docs the api docs the chaos hub the community things about the community uh, if you have more than one hub you will get it here you can see the environments uh, and which are chaos infra is connected to and at the bottom you will see all the experiments of that run as a part of your litmus pipelines so this is straight out of litmus but you are seeing it all in the backstage platform itself so you can see uh, how many experiment ran what was the resident score of it who ran it executed how many uh, how many hours ago or minutes ago so everything that's uh, litmus related would be uh, shown to you in a single place without actually having you having to go and out of the platform and do it here so if, if you can even run it from here if you click the run uh, experiment it will actually be live and you can you, sh you can see the pipeline but yeah i think with this you can also go to the uh, litmus execution directly and you can see uh, what went wrong or what went right what was the log what was the probes and things like that cool so what we have for the demo today is actually this application called uh, uh, online boutique app by google cloud platform so this is the architecture uh, it has uh, is a demo microservice application by the way but uh, we are mainly targeting the cart service which is at the bottom right above the redis cache so it has uh, it looks something like this it's a live card application you can add your uh, products you can add to cart and this should be added to the cart you can do checkout so this is just a simple microservice application now what we want to disrupt right today right now is this cart service so how it typically looks like is something like this 
So this is our uh, boutique application services that are running. In here, I have the cart service, which has a specific label called app equal to cart service attached to the deployment. So I want to target this specific pod with the, lab with the label so that it goes down and our application is actually uh, down in chaos. So this is a very straightforward example, but you can, of course, elevate it further and use your own use case, add your own use case, create your own hypothesis. So these are all the components of Litmus. Once you deploy Litmus, you will have Mongo for high availability. You would have your uh, front end, the GraphQL, the authentication, and then you have event tracker, operator, chaos exporter, and controller. So the event tracker is used for GitOps. Exporter is used if you want to export your own metrics. Then you have operator, which you can use to operator is actually the guy who is using uh, injecting chaos via chaos runner. It's checking for if your application uh, labels, targets are actually present or not, things like that. So it does all the good stuff. Cool. Uh, with that, we also have monitoring set up right now with Prometheus and Grafana. This is optional. You can choose not to do it. Uh, but we provide it uh, out of the box. So if you install it, uh, we have a utility uh, already in the repo. So you can, uh, if you install it, it should be available. So the repo looks something like this. So it's github.com litmus chaos slash litmus. Uh, there are other umbrella projects in the litmus chaos project itself, but uh, this is the main one. Uh, so if you go down, you can see this chaos center and there's a monitoring. So monitoring is where the Grafana is there and chaos center is where you will find all the information regarding uh, installation. So you have the Bitnami Mongo, and you have the manifest, which you can use. You can also do it via Helm. It's, pro it's possible. So uh, you can go to the uh, docs.litmuschaos.io to see all, this, all of this. But yeah, let me just jump right into the demo. OK, cool. So uh, before we move into doing one of the pod deletes, this is the API uh, setting where you can generate an API token uh, from Litmus, and then you can use this token in Backstage to uh, connect it. Uh, but yeah, if you go to the application or the account settings, you can use this new token and generate one token and use it at Backstage. Now let me jump over to Litmus. So this is what we have. This is exactly what we saw at the Backstage platform too. Now what I want to do is inject chaos. Let me create a new chaos. We call it cart disrupt. I'll be selecting my infrastructure, in which case this is the chaos infra, which I've already connected. And because of this infra, you are actually able to see the, you know, you saw the workflow controller, the subscriber, uh, the uh, operator, things like that. So all of the, all of the dependencies actually come up when you install uh, infra. Now I want to select the blank canvas, and I want to apply uh, the individual fault that I want. So in here, you can see a list of faults, right? You have AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes. So I'm going to just select the Kubernetes one. Uh, by the way, these faults are completely open source, and also the repository is free. It's uh, Chaos Hub. You can go to hub.litmuschaos.io to find this. I'm just going to use pod delete to keep it simple. To target it, I'm going to use a type of deployment with the namespace of boutique, where my application lies. And uh, the label is app equal to cart service, like I mentioned. You can tune the fault to make it, let's say, a little bit longer. Um, we can see the result. I've already run it, so it won't really matter. But in the probes, this is an important section, uh, like an important thing we have added with 3.0, uh, which is resilience probes. So this is uh, like a pluggable check that you want to inject in your chaos, uh, but not as an optional parameter, but rather than a rather uh, important, like a like create it as a global instance and use it anywhere in your experiments. It's not like you are using a fault or you're using an experiment, it's optional. You can go ahead and add a probe, but rather it's necessary. Because we want to target or we want to achieve uh, uh, pluggable checks in such a case that it makes sense, rather than you know just have probes for the sake of it. So in this probe, it's an HTTP probe. It's just, doing, uh, it's just checking for the URL and it's checking if it's healthy or not. So this URL is the URL of the online boutique store. Uh, you can also change it to the FQD and link of the service you are uh, you know, disrupting or anything. So it's really extensible. And this is kind of a principle that we want to advocate that it's a resilience probe first approach. You create it first, and then you can uh, add it to any and uh, as many experiments you'd like. So let me add this. Uh, these are the different modes of adding. So it's start of test, end of test, edges both. Uh, the check will happen both before and after, continuous on chaos. So I'm just going to do SOT. I'll apply, and I'll save. So once I save, I will click on Run, and the experiment should start running. Now let me go back to the terminal. So here you would see uh, some chaos uh, operations already spinning up. So in this case, OK, let me just move it aside so you guys can see it clearly. Yeah, so you would see the logs of, your, uh, of the application execution on the right. And then you can see the terminal here, right? So it'll, it's, it's, uh, it actually spawned up this guy, card disruption. 
And we are targeting this, which is card service, which is running for 152 minutes. We'll soon see it go down, because that's the disruption of the hypothesis we planned to do. Now, once it goes down, our well and functional application would unfortunately not work. So that is the outage we are uh, planning to do. So this could be anything. This could be a different kind of scenario for your case. You can inject uh, latency. In a platform engineering scenario, you can induce uh, latency in your database. You can in uh, induce uh, disruption in your uh, infras. So things like that, things which are specific to your use cases, you can do it via this application. As you can see, it terminated and restarted for uh, in like this four seconds, seven seconds. Now if I go and reload, it should not work. And that's that. Chaos happened, so you can't really do anything. This is a disruption that we simulated. Now, this is safe because you're doing it on your own, not an actual production environment that is down, right? So now you can take your time, figure out what went wrong, look into it, uh, see uh, the solution. And then once you are ready with the solution, deploy it back and check again. So this is the power of uh, chaos engineering. And it is doubled with the combination of platform and chaos engineering, because you're doing everything in a single uh, run. Awesome. So. That's the demo. Let me show you how the final thing would look like, because it would take a bit of time to run. But you can see the same thing would look something like this. So you would get a verdict from the Argo controller and from the chaos results here. It would say that your URL that responded with the actual code 200, but expect it was also 200, so it passed. Uh, and in case the combination of our fault and the probe success percent uh, results or accounts to our resilience score. So you would, uh, of course, get a resilience score at the end of your experiments. You can see this is 100% because everything was successful. Probe was also successful. But if not, then you would compute that accordingly and uh, give you a resilience score. So yeah, that's it. That's all about the demo. Uh, one last thing is this uh, monitoring setup. So you can see that the monitor, let me refresh that once, because we are just doing some chaos, and we should see some annotations. Oh. All right. All right, so you can see uh, some annotations coming right up on the right side. It's just starting up because we are still doing it. But I ran a few, and you can already see the historic data of that. So you would see that the card QPS and everything goes down. We have annotations. So it's all, always useful to see this kind of uh, data when you're monitoring it so that you can exactly see what is wrong. And you can also use the Prometheus probe in this case to scrape the metrics and then do something out of it in the prom Prometheus concept with the PromQL query, of course. So yeah, that's all about the demo. Let me jump back and talk about the future vision. Cool. So, what's uh, what's the roadmap for us on the you know in the future? So, what are we planning? So, there are four pillars to the roadmap that we are actually looking forward to in terms of. Um, open source contribution and how we are envisioning it in the long run. One is the maturity model. We have to define the maturity model for chaos engineering and platform engineering context. Of course, there's the maturity model for chaos engineering, but it's not uh, there for chaos in platform. It's a relatively newer concept, which uh, a lot of us has to accept first in order to go ahead and start doing it. Second is the industry standards. So we have to, as a community, contribute to the development of industry standards on uh, fostering a chaos platform, chaos first principle platform, and of course have to make people understand this is important and it is something we should adopt. Third is defining guardrails. This is an interesting point because oftentimes we question the uh, permission requirements or the RBAC requirements for chaos. Like anybody could go and you know break something. How? Who is stopping you? So this is where we need to define guardrails in chaos and ensure that it's safe and compliant and not everybody has the right permissions to do everything. So you need to give. Uh, provide a safe environment, either through a different uh, you know, staging environment or in the production, give certain RBAC or certain context to some specific developers to be able to do it. So this is something we need to you know, uh, create and uh, make a different solution out there for. So it's open to the community. And then we have a budgeting problem, right? Because chaos is very expensive. Of course, if you're doing a hog or a you know, CPU hog, memory hog, node drain, so it's there's toil, toil in your uh, infra. So your infra would overload, uh, spiking your chaos resource consumption and your budget. So it's a definitely an expensive thing to do. So we need to uh, be more mindful and approach this as a framework rather than you know, an expensive uh, experiment exploration. So yeah, that's about it from my side. Thank you guys for joining in and listening to the talk. Uh, you guys can scan the QR and leave some feedback. Thank you so much.
Awesome. Uh, I'm open to taking questions, but before that, I also have one of the maintainers of Litmus with me, so I'll just like to introduce Shubham to join me, and we both, both can take Q&As. Shubham. Cool. Would you guys have any questions? We are here. If not, it's fine. I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> we do. Hello, I've got a question. Over on your uh, right. Where, where are you? On hello, your right. hello. Okay, hi. Uh, you showed the Litmus stuff running kind of part of a CI CD pipeline, and so you had what I'm guessing is like an existing environment set up where the application would be deployed and then you run all the stuff in. Um, mm -hmm. How efficient, uh, at least that's my understanding, how efficient do you find that? Is that affecting like lead times of how much stuff gets through CI CD? If stuff fails chaos, do you still deploy it? and then just be like, this isn't massively resist resilient, but it'll be fine? Kind of, what's the attitude and, and, and setup around that? So first thing, it's not actually a CI-CD pipeline. We have made it look like it's a CI-CD pipeline, but it's not. It's okay. actually uh, your control plane, so you're deploying components to your plane, and then you're actually executing chaos in there. So you have your dynamic execution plane. You can choose which cluster you want to run it against. But the idea here is uh, once you have a use case, right, you want to go for it and see the result with the chaos result CR that you get. It might not be. You know, it might give you the exact log or the exact fault scenario that you planned out, and you might say that this isn't very effective, so you might need to change it to something else. So you generally do, pod lead is a very simple example, to be honest, but uh, you generally do things like uh, node level disruption or something that might actually go wrong, like in case of uh, tremendous load, like uh, Raj mentioned, we, he used a J meter or like, you know, uh, a load testing tool on top to simulate the exact kind of behavior. So Litmus's APIs are completely open, so you can use the API as well as your own architecture and then plan it out accordingly. So that way it's more meaningful for the individual use case. Yeah. Yeah. Do you sorry, if you probably have okay. Do you test in production or do you stick it on test environments or Okay. So that's interesting. We do test in uh, not in production. We have it in production. We don't it as game days, but we test in pre prod. Generally, that's the safest that we think it is. Because um, you know you definitely can break stuff in production, but you know. Cool. I probably have more questions about Litmus, but I recede my time. Sure, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, how do you recognize the uh, experiment in your traces? Uh, in the, you mean the observability side? Yeah, so maybe. Yeah, but how can you uh, distinguish if it was your experiment or a real failure? Can you? Um, I mean, you want to specifically see who ran it, who ran the experiment in the trace? Is that it? Or you want to just see the result or what went wrong in the experiment through the trace? No, let's say by the end of the month, if you look at all the failures, yeah. and some of them were your experiments and some of them were real failures. So okay. is, can you find that in traces? Yeah, um, yes, we do have a general availability pipeline here at the top. But yeah, you can customize it. You have a, uh, not this, the probe success percent. But I mean, in this dashboard, it's not shown. But yeah, you generally have, you have to create your Grafana dashboard such that you can actually count the number of you know, failures. And you should not keep it the same as uh, your um, production. I mean, your production should have a different dashboard, definitely. And the uh, platform you are. Production. <laughs> No, you definitely can do it on production, but a pre-prod is generally a replica of your production, so you can definitely try it there, and you can break production that's on you, uh, but you can replicate the Grafana dashboard in there. So this is more of a testing dashboard where you're seeing testing data from chaos, from Litmus, not the production dashboard. Yeah, so thanks. That's sure. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Is it possible to declare these tests uh, using YAML? Yes, it definitely is. So. Um, and Litmus, where we actually edit or you know where we do the blank canvas, 
uh, the entire YAML is visible to you. So you can edit your YAML and declare it as much, uh, you know, with the granular details that you want. So the entire YAML is visible to you. Also, if you want to create your own experiments, you can do that via the Litmus SDK. So it will help you bootstrap and get started, and you can create your own. Uh, and also for the hub, the chaos hub, where you can see all these faults, right? Uh, these are also declarative. So you can take these faults and you can create uh, your own thing. Not here, but yeah. These are just some templates that we have, but of course you can pick these templates as well and extend upon it. Use the SDK to make it more declarative. Right. Okay. And can you lock down the UI so that users don't create things from there and only through, for example, Flux or Argo? For that use case, what, we, what you can do, there are two things. You can, of course, use the RBAC uh, capabilities of Litmus in Project Setup uh, members. So you can give your uh, members permission or access to what kind of control they would want. The second is you can actually use the Litmus APIs so that, that way you can only give specific people um, access or permission to do those tests. But okay. we can't really lock down the UI because it's an admin panel, uh, but you can give uh, access to whoever wants uh, with what level of granular details. That's nice. Um, when it comes to RBAC and end users, yeah. as a cluster admin, I want my end users to have limited accessibility, uh, so namespaced access. And yeah. so I would expect uh, some sort of uh, service account impersonation to, uh, to be in place. Is that planned, or what implementation are you thinking of uh, uh, to, to make this more multi-tenant, so to speak? I sure can answer that. Can you repeat your question? Uh, yeah, so if we have tenants in a cluster, we need to make sure that even if Litmus is running with cluster admin permissions, let's say, uh, it itself, when running tests for a specific user or tenant, so to speak, it should be limited to that tenant's uh, permission set. Yeah, so we, uh, like in the YAML itself, we have an option to provide the service account. So if uh, the service account which is binded to that user, th uh, can you show Shan? Yeah. So if you will use that service account which is does not have those permissions, then uh, it will use only it will like you know it will not run that experiment if that user does not have uh, that permissions. Okay, uh, because what I'm thinking of is even if like a user could perhaps reference a service account that they should not be able to use. Um, so is it? Is it uh, possible to restrict this service account to a specific namespace? Uh, yes. So, I mean, this is a good requirement. We can uh, like an add a validation in the UI itself. Mm. So if uh, one user does not have permission, then, I mean, we will allow only uh, the specific users because we have the user management as well. So we will allow only those users. We can white, uh, whitelist the namespace as well for a specific user. So that we can add in a future roadmap, but right now we do not have that. Yeah, yeah, it's just some ideas that come to my yeah, mind. Definitely. And Thanks. another idea, like what this lady mentioned here about the status and identifying whenever you have had an outage. Yeah. Uh, what I'm looking at is, for example, Kyverno, which uh, returns mm -hmm. a result of scans that it has performed. Uh, same with Tekton, it gives you a pipeline run, so a specific run of a pipeline as a CRD. So you see what has run, which, which parameters, and when it ran. Uh, yeah. So it's in a similar fashion to implement everything using CRDs. Yeah, it right. could be um, of inspiration to look at these patterns of design. Yeah. Yeah, we also have CRD called Chaos Results, so there you will see the all mm. uh, reports and everything. You will, see, you will see the target details and the historical data as well. Thank you. Yeah, and in the if you see the Grafana dashboard as well, there is a annotations. Hmm. So uh, if there is some variation in the uh, data, then you can see. I mean, can you show? So in that anno annotations, in that reason, it means uh, th this spike is because of the chaos. So if there is no annotation, it means it is not during the chaos. Okay. So it is some natural chaos or hmm. something. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, but these are great additions. We'll definitely look into it. Also, what she mentioned about the Grafana, right? We can also add a plugin built in something, so it's easier. Yeah, cool. Uh, we are a little out of time. I would like to wrap up, but we can definitely discuss uh, off offline. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for the talk.